Hi, my name is Lee McDonald. I'm one of the cardiologists here at South Denver Cardiology. I'm one of the structural interventional cardiologists. Uh, what that means is I take care of patients who have uh, different problems with their heart, problems with valves, problem with chambers of their heart. But what we're going to talk about today is um, people who uh, may have something called aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is one of the most common valvular problems that people can have, particularly people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. What happens is people through time start to develop thickening of one of their valves called the aortic valve. As the aortic valve thickens, it stops opening quite as easily. What happens then is if the valve doesn't open, as quickly or easily, the first thing that can happen on, uh, if for most people is they can develop a murmur. A murmur is just a sound that the blood flow makes um, as it goes through a tighter area. The way I like to describe it is if you're out in the garden and you're using your hose and the water is going just fine, it just makes a clear sound. But if you make a kink in that hose, shh, you can hear that little noise if you kink your hose. A murmur is somewhat the same thing. If there's a little narrowing uh, or something that's changing the blood flow, we can hear that with our stethoscope. So sometimes the very first time that we know something is going on with one of your heart valves is we can hear a doctor hears a murmur. The other thing that can happen is that people can develop symptoms um, from a heart valve that has a problem. Aortic stenosis being the most common uh, valvular problem that people can have has some cardinal symptoms that we want people to watch for. The cardinal symptoms are shortness of breath when, they're try when people are trying to do things. Say for instance, you normally could take a 10 minute walk and you felt great. Now you notice, I can't walk 10 minutes anymore. I have to stop after a few minutes. Those are things are, I used to be able to walk up the stairs. Now I can't walk up the stairs easily. I have to stop halfway up. These are things where people start to develop these symptoms. It, it can be a significant symptom of a heart valve problem, particularly aortic stenosis. The second cardinal symptom or common symptom that people can have is chest pains. As cardiologists, we talk to a lot of people and there are different reasons for chest pains, but one of those certainly is a valvular problem. And then the last cardinal or common symptom from aortic stenosis is dizziness or passing out. We know that if people start to pass out because the valve is not opening enough, this is a very serious situation. So for anyone who has any of those cardinal symptoms, we think it's important for you to talk to your primary care doctor and see um, if you have a murmur or if you have any signs or other symptoms that would make them concerned um, about what's going on. In those patients, the most common uh, next step is something called an echocardiogram. Echocardiogram is different than an EKG. You've heard of an EKG where people have those little squiggly lines that, that are made. An echo is actually an ultrasound that is done on the surface of your chest. A technician will put some jelly on your chest and take pictures, sound pictures, of your heart. And the technology now has allowed us to take very detailed, incredible pictures. These incredible pictures tell us all kinds of information about your strength of your heart muscle, but also can tell us all about your valves, and particularly this aortic valve. We um, know then we can measure how fast the blood is traveling by this valve to really grade how severe the aortic valve problem is. In people, we usually grade that as mild, moderate, or severe. For people with severe aortic stenosis, with symptoms, we know this is a serious, life-threatening medical problem. The estimated survival for someone with severe aortic stenosis and symptoms is less than two years. That's worse than any cancer that has spread metastatic cancer um, that we know. So this is a very serious, life-threatening situation. The one difference I think between this and a lot of those cancers is we have a cure for this. 
We have a cure for aortic stenosis and that's a new heart valve. There are two ways that we can place uh, heart valves. One is uh, open heart surgery. And that was the way that it was done for many, many years. And for some people having valvular problems, open heart surgery is still the right choice. But for many people with severe aortic stenosis now, there's a new procedure over the last decade called TAVR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, um, that allows us to do this procedure while you're awake but sedated through a tube in your leg we can go in and replace the valve with your old valve by pushing it out of the way and placing a new valve inside of there. This is one of the biggest uh, revolutions, new technologies that has really taken cardiology by storm and also really all of medicine. This is an incredible thing. It's one of the reasons why I think 20 years ago when an older person, someone in their 70s or 80s might say, well, I'm just old and I'm not going to do anything about it. That's not the case anymore. Given this technology is so applicable and we can use it in so many different people, I think it's really important for people to talk to their primary care doctors because an echocardiogram may diagnose this. And with the procedure done through a leg, that you'll walk out of the hospital with just a Band-Aid on your leg and most people spend 24 hours, maybe 48 hours in the hospital, people can resume having a great quality of life and it extends their life. So this is an important reason why I think if you are not feeling well, it's time to talk to your physician. Make sure if you have been told you have a murmur that we have checked it with an echocardiogram. And if it comes to the point where you, uh, your doctor has told you you have aortic stenosis, the South Denver cardiologists are ready to help take care of you, particularly our structural team. We have a whole team of doctors and nurses and nurse practitioners that are here waiting to see you. Um, we have a team working to uh, work people up for this. And as I mentioned, many people going for these procedures and then living great lives and enjoying their lives and, and, and the time that they have. So. I think it's important, again, that if you have a problem, we want to see you and uh, we want to see what we can do to help. Mm -hmm.